Okay, should we start? Yes. So do you want me to start or any Ekaterina? Yes, hello. Hello everybody. I think we should start. Yes. Unfortunately, we can't um uh, get uh, Eric uh, with us. Yes, but anyway, we can start with our webinar. George Tujinski, Director of Research and Advisory Solutions. So, uh, you can you can just begin. All right. Thank you, Katarina. Um, yeah, good afternoon or maybe good evening to uh, those of you who are joining the webinar today. Um, I'm delighted to have been invited by OISOMI um, to give this uh, overview about the digital adoption model. Uh, my name is Jörg Stutzinski. I'm working for HIMSS Analytics. I'm based in Leipzig, Germany. Um, my respons responsibilities include the uh, development and usage of the Maturity models that we have at HIMSS, uh, for example, the digital energy adoption model, but also the EMR adoption model and others. Um, and yeah, today I would like to give you an um, overview of how the digital imaging adoption model works. Before I start with that, I would like to give you a brief introduction um, about HIMSS, for those of you who might not know it. So basically, HIMSS is a member based organization. Um, has been founded already in 1961, so it's quite a while already. Um, the original um, roots of him today in the United States, the head office in Chicago, but we also have regional offices, for example, in Berlin uh, and Leipzig. Um, the mission for him is to enable better health and information um, And we basically, as him, have three main branches. So many of you might uh, have heard about the HIMSS annual conference, the largest health IT conference in the world um, that takes place in the United States. Conferences in Europe, like the um, World of Health IT, for example. Um, we also have a media branch uh, where we uh, publish uh, articles, uh, magazines about the health information technology. Uh, and the third branch is analytics. That's the branch I'm presenting today. Um, as HIMSS Analytics, we are also part of HIMSS, and we um, work mainly with healthcare provider organizations and uh, healthcare IT vendors. Uh, and we have offerings both, for example, for healthcare delivery organizations, the short calls to assess and evaluate organizations, um, and benchmark organizations for healthcare IT. Pro, uh, providers, providers, and uh, we also offer um, writing programs or market research activities. Um, I also wanted to show this chart uh, where you can see that uh, what we are doing um, is a global activity, basically. So we are in touch with uh, more than 9,000 hospitals provided. Um, many of them are from North America, so the United States and Canada. Um, where we have already assessed more than 6,000 hospitals. Um, in Europe, we have more than 2,000. Uh, in Turkey, uh, we, are, we have a contract with the Ministry of Health, where we have assessed all the public hospitals. Uh, and also in Asia Pacific, we have uh, activities going on. Um, having said that, uh, I will now come to the digital imaging adoption model. Um, first of all, you might uh, ask yourself um, why we need a model for radiology, um, because radiology is one of the areas that is uh, mostly digitized already. Um, we have radiology information systems and tax systems uh, that are um, available in most hospitals today in advanced countries. Um, so why do we need a maturity model? Well, um, imaging is a complex area. Um, so here you can see an example of all the different systems, technologies, um, actually a selection of the technologies that have played an important role uh, in 
um, it's not only about risk and attacks, uh, there's also the medical records, uh, or hospital information system, you have monitoring systems outside of radiology, um, you have interface engines, and so on, and all of that needs to be connected somehow. And uh, if you talk, if you get the different types of images, DICOM, non DICOM, then uh, it gets uh, even more complicated. You get all of this organized. Uh, and um, for complex situations, uh, you typically have appropriate means. Um, so, like in a, a complex thing, you can navigate yourself with a GPS or a CPC. And for image management, support, we develop something um, not really similar to GPS, uh, but something that helps you um, pro provide guidance to access um, medical imaging medics. And that's the visual imaging. Um, the imaging model has been developed uh, in a collaboration uh, between HIMSS Analytics and the European Society of Radiology. Um, we started work uh, two years ago in 2015 from the um, with experts from the ITAR and from HIMSS uh, or CIOs to um, discuss criteria uh, and develop framework. Um, our purpose when developing uh, the model was to provide thought leadership and guidance um, for professionals in medical imaging. Uh, we wanted to support, first of all, users, so um, specialists, hospitals, um, with uh, their identification, uh, with the identification of potential infrastructure gaps, um, wanted to enable them to monitor progress they make over time before they invest technology um, or change in workflow, change in process, and assess them afterwards again. Um, we wanted to provide a roadmap um, that you can use for uh, future investments. And it's very important also, we want to enable the sharing of best practice with the model, especially with those organizations who achieve high ratings uh, in the model. So we want to put them on stage. We want Publish what they have done in order to achieve a uh, advanced imaging medical imaging environment. Uh, and last but not least, we also want to push the market to adopt digital strategies. And um, here's a short history of what has been done so far. So I mentioned already that we started in 2016. Um, in 2016, we did some pilot assessment and then launched the model officially at the Congress of Radiology in Vienna. Um, then, uh, after after the official launch, we reached uh, out to organizations um, to uh, evaluate them on the model. And then, towards the end of 2016, we uh, had responses from organizations in 11 different countries. Um, now, in 2017, we start collaborations with the Radiology Society in order to help us to promote. Uh, push the model to uh, have users um, and, and then practitioners of medical imaging uh, assessments. And very new, actually, is one month we have started a work group in the IAM to uh, work on an enterprise imaging version of uh, the model. Um, so we want to have a radiology assessment have already and also want to add uh, an assessment uh, but that's still pretty new and the plan is to have this ready sometime next year um, so for the model uh, for the diam we have uh, 10 different focus areas that we look into um, so we look into the, the software infrastructure that is in place health information exchange capabilities workflow and process security measures uh, that are used, quality and safety management, patient engagement, and so on. You can see them all this year. Um, and based on these focus areas, we have created a uh, sort of hierarchy of framework, uh, which you can uh, see here, which basically forms the digital adoption model. So the model finally has uh, eight stages from zero to seven. Um, it starts with stage one. 
Um, and then if you move up uh, in those stages, um, you have you achieve a uh, higher maturity of medical imaging capabilities. So that's the idea behind the model. Um, it's also similar to some of the other models that we are using as simple analytics, like the electronic medical record adoption models, which is quite successful. Um, so we have used kind of similar framework this here as well. But there are some changes which I will um, explain later on, or some differences. <clears throat> so the model really starts with stage one, where we expect uh, to have an imaging IT infrastructure available in one area. So if this is radiology, what we expect is that in the department um, you are uh, you are capable to process electronic or electronic orders, electronic images, digital images, uh, and also reports. So no paper. Uh, Paper forms used for that anymore. Um, in the next higher stage, we want to see that this capability is starting to grow across the enterprise. So we want to see that uh, there is data exchange happening through the same user enterprise, typically the, the EMR, where, where orders can be exchanged, images can be exchanged, hospital wide. In the next uh, stage, stage three, um, when you have those capabilities, you want to make sure that uh, you also have a safe, um, efficient environment. So the stage is about workflow and process security. Um, here we are looking at capabilities, for example, that hospital or uh, also the external radiology um, center. It's making sure that the right patient gets the right examination, that there is status management in place, so that some of the referring patients can see that their report uh, is ready, um, and also that quality measures are in place, so that critical indicators are measured. And uh, the next higher stage, stage four. Um, we talk about the fully integrated and digitized image management environment. So here we want to see that really um, across the whole enterprise, um, all uh, images, and we are talking about radiology uh, mostly, um, can be exchanged, uh, orders can be exchanged at one. So what has started already in stage two is now finished in stage four. Uh, and we also want to see um, that the organization is using um, at least partially structured documentation capabilities, structured reports, um, yeah, and of course, uh, and also starting to exchange information with uh, external care organizations. Um, until stage four, the model has a hierarchical, uh, uh, or your organization's progress hierarchical through the model. That means um, you need to fulfill the gaps of lower stages in order to um, be able to climb to a higher stage. Um, this kind of stops at stage five. Um, so stage five, six, seven um, uh, can be achieved um, if you are good in one, three, one, two, or three of the higher um, areas that we have listed here. So, for example, you can achieve stage five uh, if you have advanced information exchange uh, and patient advanced patient engagement capabilities. So that means, for example, that images and education are made available for patients, for example, patients uh, or other means, um, that you uh, have a social media strategy to engage patients, for example, um, or something else in that area, that you are also capable of to exchange uh, information, um, basically images, reports, orders, other organizations, also of different care types, not only between hospitals, but also uh, general practitioners or long-term care centers, for example. Um, another... George, 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 sorry. Yes. Uh, um, there is some problems with the sound. The audio, it's very poor. Um, maybe it can be closer, I, I don't know. I'm already one centimeter in front of my microphone. 
Not sure how I can improve that. Do you hear me better now? Yes, it's better. Yes, it's medium. Okay, okay, sorry. Thank you. Okay, I will try to speak louder. Okay, so um, day five, six, and seven. So uh, the second um, critical capability for reaching one of the higher stages is technical decision support, value based thinking. Um, so, what we want to see here uh, is that organizations are using, uh, for example, appropriateness criteria. Um, in order to uh, provide the best examination, the uh, most appropriate examination to the patient. Um, there are tools that can help you uh, with the decision um, or other clinical decision support uh, function, access to medical imaging libraries, for example, um, that they are using coded content in order to drive clinical decision support. So basically, you have structured documentation, you can create rules engines. Um, help uh, or to have the computer system providing um, uh, optimal treatment decisions to the radiologist, for example, optimal um, decisions of what kind of uh, diagnosis or um, documentation may be appropriate for that case uh, that the radio radiologist is seeing, um, and that there are that organizations are also using uh, computer aided detection, computer aided diagnosis, or functions like that. And uh, last but not least, there is a third area for the higher uh, for these higher stages, five, six, seven, uh, which talks about uh, analytics and personalized medicine capabilities. So here we want to see or understand how organizations are making use of the amount of data that they are now having available. Um, so, do they have, are they engaged in data projects? Um, are they using data for making risk analysis, uh, risk certified patients, for example, uh, and provide um, 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 uh, health maintenance um, measures to those patients who are at higher risk? Uh, and so that's what we want to be. Um, those higher stages. Uh, the logic, logic is if you're good in one of these areas, then you can achieve stage five. If you're good in two of these areas, then you can achieve stage six. And if you're good in all three of these areas, then you can achieve stage seven. Um, I also wanted to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the scope of the model. Um, so basically, we have uh, tried to develop a model that is internationally applicable. We have tested it in a lot of countries already and it has uh, proven to work, to work there uh, pretty well so far. Um, we also wanted to provide or to create a model that is that covers kind of all imaging services. If you only look at the model itself, uh, it's valid for all types of imaging services. But at the same time, um, the assessments that we are currently using is addressing the challenges of a specific area that the uh, currently currently that is radiology. And I mentioned already that we are working on the enterprise uh, imaging edition at the moment. Uh, and the reason why we did that is we wanted to provide uh, a model that is uh, usable for exactly that level of responsibility. So if you are, if we have a radiologist taking the assessments, we want to provide them with a most meaningful um, assessment and um, yeah, outcome um, for their specific area. Uh, if the, the assessment would be done by a cardiologist, or by a pathologist, maybe from an uh, enterprise IT perspective, um, then they would need to uh, go through a different assessment. Um, so, having split that into, um, we will split it into areas, and currently we have the radiology edition ready. Um, that enables us to keep the assessment manageable, also from the time perspective, if somebody needs to go out, look at us the assessment. So, target audiences at the moment are radiologists, uh, and basically hospitals who have a radiology department. Um, or imaging centers outside of hospitals that collaborate with hospitals. 
not really made yet uh, for a small radiology practice of one or two person. Uh, it's really made for uh, larger organizations. Uh, in terms of design, I already talked about model eight stages. Uh, for each stage, there are specific science goals. And the idea is, or the logic of the model is that uh, you definitely present of all our of all of our requirements in a certain stage in order to uh, successfully pass that stage. So you don't need to uh, have everything everything in place, but seventy percent of what we require. Um, in terms of methodology, um, we have an online survey um, that, um, from experience so far, takes between two to four hours to complete. Um, and that uh, assessment or the, the survey should be done by um, heads of imaging departments, radiologists uh, working together, of course, also with IT representatives. So, how does it work? From an operational perspective, um, so organizations who are interested can contact us. Or they can go to our hims.eu website or they can go to the EMR website. There's a link and they can, uh, can go directly to the IM assessment from, from that link or they send us an email. Uh, then they fill out the survey. The survey comes back to us. We do a quality, quality check on the response that we are receiving. So are they meaningful? Is our, um, if we see something strange or not ideal that we are getting back to the organization who is full survey. Uh, and finally, once we have um, data that we are um, scoring the organization um, based on the algorithm that we have developed, we create a gap report um, which contains the stage of the organization on benchmarks and also some action items. Of here is a screenshot from the online survey. So the um, general structure is that on the left-hand side you have a capability statement. The middle part can provide your responses. Um, it's typically a three-point Likert scale from not enabled to fully enabled. Uh, and at the end also you can make a comment uh, or you can also ask a question and that will be picked up by our policy. Um, there's also a table of contents provided, so you can jump back and forth to the survey. Um, so all of that works um, until stage five, um, basically we're more or less online. Um, if you want to achieve stage six and seven, we have additional validation steps uh, because we want to make sure that, first of all, everything is really correctly understood. Um, we want to be sure that uh, what you are um, providing in terms of data uh, is also right, uh, so uh, available in daily practice. Um, the reason for this is um, organizations achieve stage six and seven will receive awards from HIMSS and PSR, and we will make them publicly um, available, uh, and we also we we'll put them on stage at some conference, uh, conference, ESR conference, somewhere else, uh, and publish that they are that they have achieved um, of advanced imaging uh, environment. So far, um, we have not found a stage uh, six, seven organization, so we are still uh, looking out for one. So if someone on the call today. Uh, who is thinking that uh, they are having a really advanced imaging environment, please reach out to us. Uh, we are happy to test the organization. Um, so if you have done the assessment, what are you getting in return? Uh, I already mentioned the gap reports. Here you see an uh, extract screenshot of such a report. Um, first of all, you see, uh, of course, your stage, and then by uh, by the different stages, you also see your compliance. So how many percent of all the requirements have you met? Um, and as I mentioned earlier, you need to have 70% or more in order to climb up. Model this example here, this organization has more than 70% in stage one, two, three, but 
that's stage four. That's why they are stuck basically at stage three. Um, you can see uh, that that some capabilities are already available from higher stages, but it's just not sufficient to climb up the ladder. So you have a score and achievement, and you also see some of the gaps for the next higher stage by a focus area. So uh, for stage four, this organization, for example, need to work um, on technical documentation capabilities because they are, um, they are doing not so well at the moment. Um, in addition, you also have some target items and action items that uh, have worked on how to improve the rating uh, and the environment basically. Um, you can see here in the report if you have already uh, good capabilities for a certain action item that we require or if you need to work on something that is red or yellow. And last but not least, there's also a section for benchmarking. Um, it's not fully shown here, but uh, you can see page also down here. The organization stage three, then you can see the um, organization having scored uh, least well and the one who's doing best so far. So, I also wanted to show you where we have used the model so far. So, here you see a map with the countries, the uh, yellow color where we use the model. So overall, it's 30 different countries at the moment and 33 different organizations. Um, and uh, yeah, this is ongoing, so there's a couple more already in the plan. Um, in terms of um, results, where are those organizations um, standing? Um, and here you also see again the countries, the number of organizations that we support. So until now, the Netherlands. Uh, organizations in the Netherlands um, have participated most in the assessment, then followed by Germany and Russia. Um, on the right hand side, you can see um, their scoring. Um, so you can see that um, it's pretty well distributed in stage one and five so far. Um, we have one hospital at the moment that is a candidate for stage six and seven, but they have not gone through the official validation process, so that's still outstanding. That's why there's a generic mark here. Um, yeah, and there's no stage zero organization on the process that we have scored. The mean score at the, more, uh, at the moment is stage three. Um, we also provide some additional benchmarks that we um, based on the survey. Um, it's also part of the gap report. Um, so again, it's the mean stage and then some, some other indicators. So for example, how many radiology imaging studies are done per year um, or how many radiologists are available. Um, finally, also what is the cost, what is the, the expense, the cost of an imaging of an imaging study. Um, of course, we need more um, data sets to make the most uh, data are also more meaningful, um, but it's some rough orientation point that you can use to compare yourself with others. So far, we have received pretty good feedback for the assessments. These are some evidence from Russia and also Germany. I'm not going to read them out right now. Some of them you find also published on our websites. Um, I just wanted to emphasize that. Um, there's a good number of radiologists out there um, that have embraced the uh, assessment. Uh, in essence, the benefit of such an assessment is that uh, you're getting guidance in the digitalization of medical imaging. Um, you can use the DIAM as the framework. Um, you get decision support for your IT strategy. Um, you can Assess where you are at the moment. You can define where you want to be in a certain amount of time. Uh, you can benchmark yourself with others. Um, of course, apart from the relatively general benchmarking, you can also try to find uh, organizations that are similar to you, which might have, have at least a higher stage already, and can connect you with them. 
Um, or last but not least, um, also um, you can learn from stage six and seven organizations, which we officially announce and publish. All those organizations below stage six we do not publish, so you only do that basically for yourself. If you want to uh, announce your score, um, that's fine, but we would do it. Um, yeah, digital transformation starts with a strategy. So you can ask yourself, basically, first of all, do you have a strategy already? And if not, um, if you want to have one. And finally, where in that uh, era of digital transformation do you want to be? Um, do you rather want to come to the innovators and early adopters? Or um, maybe you're fine with being um, following the group of the late maturity, uh, but then you're also risking um, to um, yeah, lose some competitive advantages towards others. Um, I also mentioned we do not only have the digital imaging adoption model, there's also other models. Uh, if you would like to receive more information about that, I'm happy to um, provide more uh, answers. Please send me an email or you can also call me. Um, you find my, uh, my email address uh, here. Um, and if you want to start the diet assessment, then you can either go to our website, as I mentioned, write me an email, or you go to the URL that's um, stated here, and you can start the assessment yourself. It's for free. Um, it's a two step process. You need to start by filling in a short demographic assessment. And once we have that, you get um, access to the main part of the assessment, which is then uh, a personal survey only for your organization. Thank you very much. And if you have questions, um, I'm happy to answer them. Hopefully. Dijic, uh, thanks so much. It was uh, fantastic and it's very interesting and we really appreciate uh, all, all, all things that, that you do. And. Uh, uh, I think we will wait um, um, maybe some questions uh, or by our colleagues. And uh, okay, uh, um, maybe uh, can you tell us about uh, your plans uh, and uh, about your big uh, goals and uh, well, what you, what you want to do? Yeah, so uh, as I've tried to outline, uh, one of our goals, of course, is to get more organizations participating so that we um, have also better data for, for, for benchmarking. Um, that's why we are in contact with national radiology societies um, to, to help us with, us with knowing this or also with your organization, for example, um, because the more people are taking part, the more the more exercise be and um, or everybody can learn from each other, I guess. So that's one um, that's, that's one goal, get more participants. And the second goal uh, I've mentioned is um, also um, expand the model towards enterprise imaging. So not only look at radiology, uh, but look at the, the whole hospital, for example, if you're talking about the hospital, um, and uh, see how they are managing um, images from all different service areas, so not only radiology, but also cardiology, pathology, dental, ophthalmology, um, and so on. Um, and to also help them and guide them to develop hopefully a good strategy and uh, achieve the results and provide better patient outcomes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so. I don't see any questions by our colleagues. Maybe we will wait for one minute. Also, yeah, here is uh, one question, George. Uh, I think you you don't you don't see it. No, I don't uh, see. It. Uh, um, I can. Uh, you can open uh, the group chat here. 
and I, I posted to this question, you see? Oh, okay, I see. Uh, can only have a moment to do it. Um, this question, by the way, um, no, not only the head of the department, uh, ideally you said both, um, but uh, in an ideal setting, I would say um, there is a group sitting in the system, um, can be rising up in the trailer, not just um, ideally in the organization also have an economic perspective together, because um, the last part of this, um, you can also be uh, able to use it out uh, for enabling discussions with our negotiations for management, you know that we have some critical gaps or infrastructure gaps, process gaps, um, so we can use this kind of assessment. Um, there's no vendor um, bias or something in here. We use this assessment in order to um, point management that maybe some um, investment in a certain area. Yes, thank you. Unfortunately, there were, there were again some problems with the th sounds, but um, I think uh, it was, yeah, <laughs> it was the question by D Daniel Pito dos Santos, and uh, he, he said that uh, he didn't understand uh, the answer. But, but um, may maybe you can uh, you can c contact later. Yeah, unfortunately, oh, I'm, there I'm, are some problems okay. with the. I don't know how I can say that right now. Um, I can just repeat, it's not only the head of the department, um, so everybody who thinks it has knowledge about how the radiology works in his organization or can contribute can fill it in. Um, ideally, as I mentioned, as group exercises. People yeah. who are knowledgeable about, about IT and Okay, uh, dear George, thank you very much. It was uh, very interesting and just astonishing. And uh, I will share the record of uh, this uh, webinar on our website. Yeah, and uh, I, I think all, all the people who have uh, some questions uh, can uh, contact you and uh, um, by email. Yeah, and uh, I, I think uh, uh, everybody saw uh, your contacts. Yeah, um, you can I also find if you want to distribute my email to people who join the company, please feel free, no problem. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, th thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Have a good evening. Yeah, see you later. Thank you. Bye bye.